Hi YouTube family, it's Daughter of the Most High. I've been doing a little bit of reading up on CERN um, because of the event that happened earlier this week. So I just want to read a couple verses in uh, Revelation chapter 9 and then I'm just going to share some facts about CERN. So in Revelation chapter 9, then the fifth angel blew his trumpet and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth and to the angel was given the key of the shaft of the abyss the bottomless pit he opened the long shaft of the abyss and smoke like the smoke of a huge furnace puffed out of the long shaft so that the sun and the atmosphere were darkened by the smoke from the long shaft and then it goes on to about the locusts and that sort of thing through uh, chapter 11 but I just wanted to share that much. So I am going to be referencing this article um, by CERN. This was written in 2015 when they thought more was going to happen at that time. Um, there was going to be more results, and then they found that they had not achieved that. So then here we are this week um, with more power and more going on um, in the collider. So... Um, Let's see. CERN is the world's biggest machine. Straddling the French-Swiss border, the $9 billion CERN uh, Collider complex is buried at a depth of up to 575 feet. I thought it was 300 feet. I think I said that the other day. 575 feet. The tunnel complex runs along a 17-mile circuit. Scientists involved in the project say the laboratory was built underground because the Earth, Earth's crust provides protection against radiation. They also say it was buried out of respect for the natural landscape. Um, LOL. Yeah, yeah, with Shiva out front. Yeah, which sounds slightly ironic considering the massive damage the collider could possibly cause down the road. Uh, yeah. Um, massive gravitational pull. The CERN Collider is composed of 9,600 super magnets, which are 100,000 times more powerful than the gravitational pull of the Earth. Uh, that fire protons around a circular track at mind-boggling speeds. A beam might rotate for up to 10 hours, traveling a distance of more than 10 billion kilometers enough to make it uh, to the far reaches of our solar system and back again. Um, traveling just below light speed, a proton in the um, colander will make 11,245 circuits every second. This stuff's shocking to me. It's the detail and the magnitude of this is shocking to me. No less amazing are the magnets coils. It goes into, I'm not going to read it, um, very, very detailed work, though. Um, CERN generates extreme temperatures. There may be another reason for your, for the CERN Super Collider uh, being buried hundreds of feet underground, uh, the unbelievable hot temperatures it can reach. Um, well, how hot, you ask? about as hot as conditions in the universe after the Big Bang, which we don't believe, or more than 100,000 times the temperature at the center of the sun, the center of the sun. This will be achieved, CERN says, by accelerating and colliding together two beams of heavy ions, an epic scientific event that will take place next month. That was in 2015. And so now they're trying to create that currently. It's alarming. It's alarming what they're doing. Now is the point of Steve Hawkins' uh, concern, although it may require some mental gymnastics to wrap one's brain around um, <clears throat> exactly what the CERN scientists are attempting to achieve in their underground lab. The average layman may instinctively understand that such an experiment may be wrought with unforeseeable pitfalls. Stephen Hawking, the eminent 
physicist seems to agree. The god particle found by CERN could destroy the universe, Hawking wrote in the preface to a book, Star Must, a collection of lectures by scientists. The Higgs boson could become unstable at very high speeds, um, very high energy levels, and have the potential to trigger a catastrophic vacuum decay, which could cause space and time to collapse, and we would not have any warning to the dangers, he continued. Hawking is not the only voice in the scientific wilderness predicting possible uh, catastrophe if CERN continues in the atom, atomic fast lane. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson told Eugene Merman on his Star Talk radio program that the experiment could literally cause the planet to explode. Now we know that that's not going to happen because that's not God's plan. We are still working within the framework of God and his end time sovereignty as always. And so we're going to, we're, we always have that frame around everything that we read or hear or um, learn about our end time events. It's all within the framework of God um, and his sovereignty. Ask yourself how much energy is keeping it together. Then you put more than that amount of energy into the object. Tyson was confident it will explode. Um, if that is part of the equation, um, which it could be, um, we still know that we work within the framework of God's sovereignty. Um, One year after CERN's grand opening, Sergio Bertolucci, former director of research and scientific computing of the facility, grabbed headlines when he told the British tabloid the super collider could open other worldly doors to another dimension for a very tiny lapse of time, mere fractions of a second. However, that may be just enough time to peer into this open door, either by getting something out of it or sending something into it. They are not looking to send something into it. They are looking to release it into our realm. We're pretty clear on that. Of course, added Berta, Bertolucci, after this tiny moment, the door would again shut, bringing us back to our normal four-dimensional world. It would be a major leap in our vision of nature, and of course, there would be no risk to the stability of our world. Okay, there we go. Naturally, this comment has triggered fears that CERN, the CERN Collider, could unwittingly invite unwanted visitors. Is that part of the rapture? Because we know they're planning the alien. It's an alien invasion, and they took all these people up and all that kind of stuff. Is that what their motive is? Such scenarios, at least for some scientists, are no longer confined to the fictional world of Isaac Asimov novels. With the ongoing work at CERN, there's even talk about ordering opening up a portal for time travel. Okay, that's not going to happen. Um, the next point, CERN's curious choice for geographical location. I don't think we're curious at all. Now, on top of all of the speculation as to what CERN scientists are really attempting to do with their large um, hadron or hadron collider, many observers could not help but notice that the town of France where CERN is partially situated is called St. Janus, I don't know how to say this, P-O-I-L-L-Y. The name P-O-U-I-L-L-Y comes from the Latin A-P-P-O-L-L-I-A-C-U-M, and it's believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo, and the people who lived there believed that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on this same spot. Mm -hmm. Rel religious leaders always suspicious at the aims of the scientific world. Uh, yeah, you, you think? <laughs> Sorry I'm being sarcastic, but I can't help it. Drew a connection to a verse straight out of Revelation 9, chapter 9, which makes a reference to the name um, Apollyon, A-P-O-L-L-Y-O-N. The verse states, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and they had a kind and they had a kind over them 
I'm not sure what that is, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, who, whose name in the in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. I don't know how to say some of these words, A-B-A-D-D-O-N, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, A-P-O-L-L-Y-O-N. Now this is trying to tell a spiritual leader that the Bible is a conspiracy theory. Yeah, no, okay. Tapping into dark matter, yes, that's part of the equation. That's what they're doing. We know that. Astonishingly, um, I want to check my time. Astrophysical observations had demonstrated that all visible physical matter accounts for only 4% of the universe. Now, the race is on at CERN to find the, um, the my throat's drying out, those elusive particles or phenomena responsible for dark matter, 23%. And dark energy, 73%. Essentially, what the CERN experiment hopes to achieve is to separate, by way of the uh, atom smasher, the invisible dark matter, which has been described as the very glue that holds together from the visible. There's just one problem with this experiment. No one has any idea what the consequences will be if that goal is achieved. So once again, this dark versus visible paradigm has generated a battle that transcends the scientific world, becoming a question involving philosophy and spirituality. Um, yeah, they're trying to tap into that antimatter, the dark matter. And Stephen Darby was uh, sharing that. I did put that link in my video from two days ago um, to his message, 67-minute uh, message on CERN. Um, he knows a little bit more about it um, and was very concerned about it in 2015. And here we are again. Um, so they are trying to create, I believe he said, the combination of matter and antimatter um, in the collider. The CERN logo is the next key point, and we already do know about that, that it is three sixes looped, um, trying to be like creative and artsy, but we, we actually know it's 666, number of the devil and his darkness. Number two, or not number two, but the next key point, uh, deity of destruction as corporate mascot. There we go. This one again, here we go. Shiva. Um, although most corporations shun any connection with religion in the spirit world, uh, CERN has chosen its mascot as a Hindu goddess but not just any Hindu goddess, just outside the headquarters building sits an ancient statue of Shiva, the ancient Apollon, A-P-O-L-L-Y-O-N, the goddess of destruction. Strange, it says. Yes. Oh, yes. CERN is presently, and again, this is in 2015, in 2015 I mean, CERN is presently wrapping up the largest atom collider in the world. It takes months for the magnets to get the particles to reach near light speed. So this is probably a few months down the road. Um, they, they just started at, was it Tuesday? Yeah, I believe it was Tuesday. In preparation for their next atomic collision, which is scheduled to take place next month, which didn't, with barely a mention of, uh, in the media of the risks involved. Mm -hmm. Since some critics say this scientific experiment poses greater risks than even the test prior to the introduction of the atomic bomb, it would stand to reason that there should be much more discussion on this dark matter. Sadly, and not a little ironically, CERN, which essentially governs itself as its own, I don't know this word, fiefdom, F-I-E-F-D-O-M, 
That's a new one for me. Is operating just as invisibly as the particles they are attempting to study. And they are. The fact is, is that our world is not run by the people we see. I've said that before. They're the puppets. The puppeteers are behind the scenes. The puppeteers know exactly about this. Know everything and the plan and what they're hoping to achieve. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to play out. Apparently what they were trying to do seven years ago didn't occur and it gave us seven more years um, to live and get our ducks in a row and to become um, stronger in our walk with God. We should be growing every day, every week, every month and year of our Christian walk. We should be different and we have to continue drawing nearer and nearer to God. Um, and so reading about this is alarming to me. The fact that there's a good chance that something quite interesting could happen is in somewhere from two to four months from now. Um, and so we'll see what happens, but we also always remember that God is with us and we are in his care. And yes, do bad things happen to Christians? We know they do. They happen to the disciples slash apostles. We know that bad things happen to believers, but that God is with us. So I'm not quite sure what we'll go through. It sounds like this may be linked to the three days of darkness, but again, my end time uh, theology is lacking because God only awakened me to the end times in the last few years. I have so much more to learn. So I am a bit envious of those of you that are um, retired and get to spend all your time studying um, and learning and more and spending, you know, the time in prayer and study. And I look forward to that when I'm able to slow down a little bit. I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. So I do look forward to that. Um, there's so much to know um, in the word and then the end times in the word and, the, and what people are finding out. And so, yes, I do want to spend more time in study every single day. And uh, hopefully that's not too far down the road. Um, so, we, those of us that um, watch videos on YouTube, and we listen to the various visions and dreams and words that people are getting, um, they... We know something's coming, but we don't know the exact thing that's going to happen next. Um, some believe it's going to be the rapture of the church. I don't think that's the case. I wish it were, but I don't think it's the case. I think we're going to go through a little bit first. Um, and the, the point that I want to make is that um, these things, which are can be frightening at time and we can get into fear, Always remember that when you feel fear, to flip that over to faith and to choose to trust God. These things are alarming. But we have to remember that we live and work and believe and everything that we do is within God's framework. And so it's important to learn about these things and that kind of becomes our world for a little bit as we read about it um, and we wonder how things are going to play out. But then as we digest it, we can settle down and understand that we are in God's care and that he's going to take care of us. Um, I think it's very wise for all of us to um, memorize Psalm 91. Probably memorize more verses than that, but definitely Psalm 91. Because we need to have that down on the inside of ourselves. If something very dangerous happens, if the grid goes down, if, you know, we could lose YouTube and our phones and all those connections in in a day, in a moment. Uh, and that's going to happen at some point. We know that. And so we have to have, you know, our our Bible, not on our phone, but our actual, this guy, this is mine, my blue with my pretty, you probably can't see that there. It's silver. Silver right here and blue. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, my Bible's pretty. So we want to have like certain books and of course our Bible on paper and then other things and maybe make up some, you know, index cards or something of um, your favorite verses or make 
make up a notebook. I have that three ring binder I've showed before. Um, you want to have that stuff because we're not going to have what we have online and we're not going to have the same connection with people that we currently have online. And I have said many, many times on my YouTube videos that I'm so grateful for the connection of for the connection with other believers through YouTube and Facebook. Do you, this is going to be short lived. You know, we're not going to have our phones. We're not going to have the Internet um, at some point. And it's just going to be us and a few people, you know, in our area or depending on, you know, what happens or if we move to a small community like I think of Pastor Jerry Tony that's creating that little uh, community in Texas, which we should all be doing <laughs> um, if we can. Um, and so, yeah, we got to prepare for these things and we've got to have just the regular paper and pen and book and all of that um, for when this stuff goes down. So anyway, um, don't let this stuff frighten you. Always remember that faith and fear can be two sides of one coin and you can very easily flip that fear side to the faith side and just decide I'm going to trust God through this. I don't like it. I'm afraid, but I'm going to trust God through this. People go through so many different painful things and, uh, but we know that God's with us. So I, I am, um, memorizing Psalm 91. I'm working on that. Um, and I encourage you to do the same. Get that down in your spirit, in your heart, and then you'll get revelation of it too. That's how the Word of God works. It's like, you know how when we're hungry and we eat a sandwich for lunch and then we just, our stomach settles down, we don't even think about it anymore? So when we take in the Word of God, it, it, it boosts our spirit, it edifies our spirit, and then it also creates a revelation. We get a deeper revelation on that Word. And so we digest it in our spirit. And so... And that feeds us and nourishes us and gives us a revelation. So we are blessed, are we not? So that's my little snippet today on CERN. What a trip, huh? Um, it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. But uh, I'm going to close for now, fam. And uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you soon. Be blessed.